All right, all right, all right. We are back here at Song of the Day. Coming to you from the Rock Cave. I'm your host, Mark Harris. It's Thursday. You know what that means? It is Thirsty Thursday. For those of you who are thirsty, it is Thursday. What do we got going on today? What are we cooking up? We're in 70s week here. How are we doing so far here in the cave? You guys liking it? Yesterday's episode, Montrose. Not a lot of comments. Not a lot of love for Montrose, but got to tell you. That's good stuff. Check it out. You still have a chance. Uh, I'm excited for today. This is a good one. What are we talking about? We're going back to, well, it depends what what you want to uh, say about this. We're going back to either 1976, 1977, or 1978. It is complicated, uh, but we are talking about the band Heart. Gotta love Heart. Uh, Boy, what a band this is. I don't know if they get enough respect for what they were doing in the 70s uh, but we're talking about their second album magazine and what a mess this was remember they're coming off of dreamboat annie hugely successful they're starting to record their second album they get through like five songs uh early works of the five song not finished but early and because the first album is so successful their label tiny label Mushroom Records puts out an advertisement in the Rolling Stone magazine, as they say, December 30th, 1976. And it's supposed to be like a tabloid. I'm going to try to post it right here. Uh, like the National Enquirer it says National Informer. And it's plugging the record over a million copies or whatever. And it's kind of a, it is a picture of the album cover, but cut off. So it looks like they're topless. Uh, but the line says something like, it was only our first time. And they did not take well to that at all. They didn't like the tabloid part of it. They didn't like the the tagline. Uh, And they were just super annoyed. And because of the success, once they saw how many copies of that record they had sold, they wanted some more money and the label was not going to do it. And they had signed on a producer as part of their contract who was uh, guaranteed to produce their next record, the second one. And he ended up leaving. It's a mess after that. Uh, They want to leave... Uh, And they end up do leaving. They basically get hire lawyers and say, we can leave because the guy who's supposed to produce it left. It's very, it just goes on forever. Mushroom Records takes those five songs, mixes them with an engineer without the band's notice or being around or consent or anything, adds some live stuff and one B-side from another, another song single in Canada and puts it out as magazine in 1977 against their will they even have a disclaimer on the record for the djs and everyone else that says something along the lines of the band uh, does not consent to this la 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 uh they end up selling like fifty thousand copies mostly in la and in hollywood florida where the records are produced before a judge comes in and says you got to pull those records so they pull them people are hearing this record they're already hearing these songs uh and the judge also says But heart, you got to make that second record. So they go back. You can imagine how PO'd they are about that recording these songs. They decide to re-record them in 1978. They do the vocals over. They remake it. uh, And they put it out as magazine again in 1978. But they're already working on and finishing their third record for their new label, Portrait. Little Queen put out in May of 77 with Barracuda and Kick It Out on there. So many good songs. So what a mess this all was for... Uh, releases that they they say the official release is 77 although the one that they would have preferred the version that we all know is probably from 78 a uh, little bit difference recordings your song of the day today we'll talk about that right now uh, is heartless what a song this is so good went to number 24 the bass line in this puppy is so good and the vocals oh my gosh the vocals i mean it just demonstrates just how good they were uh but for heartless the re-recording she sounds a little bit more angry a little bit more Alanis Morissette in this one. Uh, and she changed it from uh, the doc order to the doc or to the doc order to the doctor order or something like that. A little minor change there, but the definitely change in the way she's singing that song. Uh, but boy, this was so good. And, uh, you know, I didn't hear uh, this record till a little bit later. I was totally into Magic Man and all that stuff. But you go back and listen to all the old heart and uh, so good before the mid 80s i mean that stuff was different didn't good for a different reason but uh just they were heavy they were hard they were rockers and i think they deserve a little more credit than they actually get um what do you guys think anyone here see heart 
in concert. Uh, did you see Heart early? See, I don't know anyone old enough to see uh, Heart in the late 70s, I think. But, uh, you know, when they say if you could do some things different, one of the things I would do differently is see more concerts as a teenager. And in my early 20s, if I could go back, I would have been like, I need to go see these shows. I'm just doing it. Camping out at Strawberries. I'm getting these records. We're going. I'm getting these tickets. We're going. Uh, but anyway, uh, Heart. Heartless. This is a good one. You're going to crank this one up. I'm having fun here in the 70s. How about you? Uh, this is a good one. Looking forward to Octane Friday tomorrow as we roll into the weekend. So whatever you're doing today, I hope it involves music. And as usual, wind it up. Heartless. I'll catch you on the flip side. Game of the rock and roll.